name's Maria Brazillo, and today we're going to be going over the English portion of the 2016-2017 version of the ACT test prep book, and that's questions 1 through 15. All right, so as usual, the first thing that we always want to do is read the entire passage. So I'm going to scroll through slowly. Please feel free to pause at any moment if you need to read more slowly, take your time. Um, once you finish reading, please try and go through the questions on your own if you haven't already. Great, here we go. All right, so hopefully you've read through the passage and have gotten a chance to answer the questions. All right, so let's start with number one. I'm going to read the sentence here. Cynthia Moss has been studying elephants since 1972 when she started the now famous Ambozelli Elephant Research Project in Ambozelli National Park in Kenya. So question one, um, let's read through the answers here. Um, we have no change, elephants since 1972, elephants since 1972, or elephants since 1972. So automatically we can throw out D here because this apostrophe is indicating possession incorrectly because elephants is not possessing anything in this sentence. So D is out. So now let's consider, do we need a change at all or can we simply stick with A? So in this case, you can tell that you do need a change here because even just reading the sentence, you can see that there is a bit of an unnatural pause here. Um, Cynthia Moss has been studying elephants since 1972 when she started blah blah blah. Whenever you're reading a sentence like this and you're thinking about commas, it can help to read the sentence in your head and emphasize the pause created by the comma. Um, and sometimes that can just help you tease out what's natural. Um, is there something that is strange here, do we need to change it? So in this case, yes. Now, if you didn't pick up on this pause here when we were reading it, that's totally okay because we can use grammar and other tools to figure out the right answer. So let's go ahead and look at B. So B has this construction here where there's um, a phrase separated from the main part of the sentence, um, which is a case between two commas. Now, whenever this is the case, um, whatever's inside the commas needs to be inessential to the meaning of the sentence. Because this phrase, since 1972, is essential to the meaning of the sentence, because the sentence is just establishing how long um, Cynthia Moss has been studying elephants, B cannot be correct. So then we're left with C and A. C is going to be the best answer because... Um, it is not doing this, and it is has a comma here on the end. It moves this comma to here, um, which separates the main clause, Cynthia Moss has been studying elephants since 1972, from the dependent clause, which is initiated by this word here, when. So the correct answer for number one is C. All right, let's talk about number two. Since 1972, when she started the now famous Ambozelli Elephant Research Project, the correct answer to two is going to be F. Now famous Ambozelli Elephant Research Project. We have this adjective here describing this um, compound noun. We know that it's not going to be H or J because these are both adverbs, which you can tell by the, the LY ending here. Um, and since it's describing a noun, we need an adjective. And then more than famous, you can also tell this one is wrong because this is not grammatically correct because 
if you're having a comparison more than famous, you need would need this to be an A. So our answer has to be F. All right, let's talk about number three. An author, lecturer, filmmaker, and a fierce advocate for elephants, which face a daunting array of threats to human encroachment. Moss is widely considered blah, 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 blah. All right. So here we have a dependent clause in the middle of this sentence here. And whenever you have a dependent clause in the middle of a sentence, it needs to be encased by punctuation on either side. Here, there's no punctuation here. So we know we're going to need to add it. Um, the general rule is you want to have the same punctuation on either side. So three, we can simply say that B is the correct answer. All right, number four. Um, so here the writer is considering adding the following true statement. Humans are among the, th the threats to the animal's survival. So this is a true statement, and we're wondering whether the writer should make this addition here. So right here, this, this is kind of a, tr a tricky kinds of questions because you kind of have to have an understanding of what the paragraph is saying as a whole. Um, so don't rush through them, and it's for these kinds of questions that I really think it's important to read the entire passage before you begin. So let's consider what the passage has already said. For a question like this, often it's testing you to see if you can tell when information is redundant. Because in writing, you don't want to have redundancy. You want to be concise and clear. Um, so in this passage, before for here, where this sentence would go, um, it says that elephants face a daunting array of threats to human encroachment. So it's already mentioning human encroachment here. So it's mentioning humans as a threat. Therefore, adding this sentence would be redundant. And as a result, we can tell that the answer should be J. Additionally, you can tell that G and H are not correct because it's not introducing anything because of this has already been mentioned. And here, it, this assumes that it hasn't mentioned a human presence before, which it does, as we just established. And for F, which is saying yes because it presents a crucial factor in determining Moss's interest in working with elephants. That may be true, but it's still redundant. All right, let's take a second and let's move on to number five. So here, let's read the sentence. A key finding from her intensive field studies is the extent to which elephant survival depends on learned behavior. So automatically, we can see that this um, comma here in the middle is incorrectly separating the two words in this compound noun, field studies. Field studies is one thing, so we don't want to have this comma here. So therefore, we know that A is not the answer. Let's look at this comma here. Do we need this comma? The answer is going to be no, because intensive is an adjective describing this noun, field studies. So we don't, we don't want to have a comma incorrectly separating those two things. And so that leaves us with B and C. So now we need to decide, do we need this comma, or is it better with no comma and just have studies? So let's read the sentence again. A key finding from her intensive field studies is... So we don't want a comma here because if we had a comma here, it would be incorrectly separating the verb and the noun field studies, the subject of the sentence. Therefore, the answer is B. All right, number six. As Moss has observed, however, a calf must learn to use its trunk. All right, so grammatically, technically, this sentence is correct. However, um, we need to think about this this um, phrase or word, however, in context. So let's see, what is this sentence doing in the broader context? We can answer that question by thinking about what we've just read, this sentence here. So here she's talking about a key finding, and that key finding is the extent to which elephant survival depends on learned behavior. So this next paragraph is giving an example of how survival is depending on learned behavior. Therefore, the best answer is going to be G, for instance, because for instance indicates that we are about to give an example of a point that we are trying to make here. All right, next question, number seven. 
Here again, it's really helpful to look at parallel structure. So the sentence is, at first a young elephant will drink by kneeling down at the water's edge and it sip directly with its mouth. So let's see. There is a, a prepositional phrase here, which begins at by. So by kneeling down at the water's edge and it sip directly with its mouth is a whole prepositional phrase describing how the elephant will drink. Therefore, we know that these verbs, kneeling and it sipped, should be in the same form. Therefore, the correct answer is going to be sipping because that creates our parallel structure here. To sum up, that would read, at first, a young elephant will drink by kneeling down at the water's edge and sipping directly with its mouth. That just helps the flow. It helps make the, the paragraph more clear. If you can ever find something that makes the meaning more clear, that's usually going to be the right answer because that's the whole point of grammar, right? We, we use grammar so that we can get a, our point across more clearly. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for video one. To see the end of this question, go ahead and check out part two of this video series. Thanks, guys. Good luck on the test.